Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Ascot Racecourse here on Tuesday. It is the 18th of June, 2024. It's day one of the Royal Meeting from Ascot. And I'm going to look at all the group races and stakes races on the program. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Get 5 for more selections for race courses around the world. And also join me throughout the week for some more Royal Ascot previews. We're going to look at the first four races. So um, let's get to it right now. The 230, the first race, it's the Group 1 Queen Anne stakes. It's Group 1 event going for a purse of just over $950,000, race for 4-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of 14 horses going 1,600 meters or a mile down the straightaway turf mile here at Ascot. My top selection, I'm going to go with the number 8 horse, Factor Cheval. I'm going to go 8-1 in the forecast exacta. 8-1 forecast, forecast exacta. That's my top two, basically. But any of these two horses can win. But I'll definitely use them in the place pot here, um, which is kind of like uh, if you're playing uh, the races here stateside uh, from one of the American, um, you know, uh, wagering sites. Um, they do have this race as a pick six, so I would go too deep here, eight one. But the top selection is eight horse factor Cheval, this French invader, five row gun by Ribchester here. Jerome Raylin trains one. Maxime Guillon gets the mount. The horse's most recent outing was an incredible success at Maidan. A mile and eighth in the group one Dubai turf. He won by a nose that day and he sat back early. He slowly moved his way into the race and when he got the turn of foot, he had to be used a lot, but he got the job done. A very good, gritty performance. Refreshing back to Ascot, where this horse showed potential in the fall behind the other French horse, Big Rock. I think this horse could get a good trip to win here today. Two back in the Group 1, Queen Elizabeth II stakes here at Ascot on very soft ground, one mile in late October. He finished second by six lengths that day, and he sat back early. He moved a little bit late. Big Rock just had the race on the, uh, <laughs> on the front end going away, but this horse... He ran his heart out that day, first star in the UK, and then prior to that, Long Champ uh, in the uh, on third September, one mile in the Group One, uh, one Prix de Molin de Long Champ. He finished third by one half lengths. Uh, so Turn really took off clear to win that day. Big Rock just kind of yielded late. This horse was traveling decently, got around the bend well. I think it was a half bad race. Uh, like I said, it, um, it, that wasn't his first start in the in, in the UK back here at Ascot. That was actually his second start. His first start in the UK he came in the Goodwood uh, at Goodwood on soft ground, one mile in the Group One Sussex Stakes, where he finished second by one half lengths. He didn't have the best beginnings that day, but he really showed some turn of foot late, getting around the race course well. You know, last fall, if you, or last spring, he was running some tough races in France. He actually placed behind Tribalist twice, once in the Prix de Mouget and once, uh, and then uh, a very good third in the Prix de Aspen at uh, Longchamp over the extended mile in the eighth. He goes up a lot with the fast ground. He's drawn well. I think at three to one he could get a trip to win. I think the uh, John Goss and Rob Havlin audience, the one horse, uh, this five year old for Ifrash, um, can win also. Most recently in the lock inch over the mile at Newbury. Great run, winning by one and three quarter lengths with 22 to one. Uh, uh, you know, easy money that day. He basically won on a stucking trip, quickened up nicely. Nobody was catching him. Very, very good race. Prior to that, he ran in the Group Two um, Third Rate Industry Employee Award Stakes at uh, Newmarket over the seven, where he finished third by five and a half lengths that day. And he just, you know, he was in La La Land. It seemed he just was flat that day, all by himself, and he just couldn't get there late. Uh, and then the Group Two Park Stakes on soft ground at Doncaster over the seven. He finished second by two and three quarter lengths. He was with them early on. He kind of got overtaken late, but he didn't go down without a fight. He, he started once here at Ascot in the past uh, in the Jersey Stakes as a trio where he ran horribly. Since then, he's become a lot better horse. You know, last year, um, you know, it took him a little bit of time to get going. Um, Missed the early part of the season, but once he finally did, he showed some decent form. Finally, win the Group One last time out. Refreshing here, ten to one. I'm going to give him a shot here to win the Queen Anne. But to recap my selection for the first now, the two thirty from Ascot's the Group One Queen Anne Stakes going to take the eight horse Factor Cheval. Give kudos to the one horse audience. Eight one forecast exacta. Use the eight one both in the. Uh, place pot or the pick six here stateside. Let's get to the second race of 305, which is the Group 2 Coventry Stakes. It's a Group 2 event going for a purse $222,500 uh, $222, race for Charles here. Uh, 23 horses are going. It's 1,200 meters to six furlongs on the turf course. Going to take the one horse here, the one horse who is Al Qadara. I'm going to go 1-5 in the forecast exacta. 1-5 forecast exacta. Top selection to one horse, Al Qadara. Oh, could draw. There we go. It's true. Colt by No Name Never. Charlie Out beat trains one for Godolphin. William Bue gets the mount. Horse's most recent out came on the poly track at Lingfield on the 4th of June. Six furlongs in a novice race. And the horse went by two and a quarter lengths that day. And he was with him early on, stalking a quick, quick pace. He quickened up nicely in the front end. 
third time's a charm. He got the job, did a very good race that day. He didn't change leads, though, but then, you know, I didn't think it was a half bad race. I like that he got the victory also around a bend. He's come back to a straightaway here today. Drawn well, has some forwardly pace. I think the six is what he wants to do, and I think this is, you know, going to be the proper spot for him here to win today. I also a little think quicker ground should really suit him well. Two back in a novice race at Newmarket, five frongs, fifth of May. On Guinea's weekend, he finished third, but went three quarter lengths that day, and the problem with his first two races, he didn't get out of the gate so clearly. He didn't break so well, and he's just behind the eight ball. He just kind of stalked and just couldn't get there late. The two in front of him were just much better than him, but he showed potential that day. And then prior to that, during a Crave meeting at Newmarket, five frongs in a conditions race or a novice race, finished fourth by one half lengths. Again, didn't break so well, and the turn a foot late. He just looked very, very lax at days ago. He really couldn't concentrate on, on the run until very late in the run. But since then, he's really improved a lot. He broke last time out quite nicely. Refreshing here. If he breaks, he has some forwardly pace that I think it would do damage in this one. I'm going to use him on the ticket. Don't throw out the cool more five horse Camille P Pissarro um, for, you know, Brian and Ryan Moore. The place in the uh, Marble Hill stays at the curve over the six back in March, uh, May. He finished second by a head that day and was traveling decently, just missed late, but on the front end, I thought that was a very good race. Prior to that, at Navin over the six in a main race, he won by one and a half lengths and basically won on cruise control. Has some decent forwardly pace, has a very good post draw. Like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if this horse gets the job done. At 92, let's use this horse in the multi-race wagers. But to recount my selection now for the second, the... Two, uh, 305 from Ascot. So group 2, Coventry. Stakes going to take the one-horse called Cadera. Give kudos to the five-horse Camille Passero. Uh, one five forecast exacta. Use them both in the multi-race. The third race, the 345 from Ascot, formerly known as the King Stan Stakes. It is the group 1 King Charles III Stakes. It's a group 1 event for class 1 horses going for an $873,500 purse. Race for 3-year-olds and upwards. A very good field of 17 horses going 1,000 meters of dashing 5 furlongs on the turf course. Um, I had trouble with this race. I think you could probably go 10 different ways here. I found my way to the 7 horse Twilight Calls. I'm going to go 7 to 4 for Cast Exacta here. 7 4 for Cast Exacta. Any of these two horses can win, so I'm definitely going to use them in the quad pot or, uh, that begins with this race, which is basically like the pick four that we have here stateside or the quaddy. So definitely use them there. Uh, use both of them there. But the top selection of 7 horse Twilight Calls is 6 year old gown by um, Twilight Sun. Henry Kennedy trains, trains this one. Ryan Moore gets them out. The horse is most most recent outing came Guinea's Day at Newmarket. Five furlongs in the Group 3 Palace House Stakes, and he finished fourth by three quarters of the length that day, and he didn't get out of the gate so clearly, which cost him. He sat back early. He really had a turn of foot late. He showed potential later in the race. Got around the race course well. Not the world's worst race for him. Back here second off the bench where the source should really improve a lot. I think he could get a, a turn of foot to uh, win here today. Two back he ran in the, um, on the 25th of August at York. Five furlongs in the Group 1 Nunth Rope. He finished 10th by 14 and a half lengths that day and he was with him early on he just kind of hit the wall that day maybe just a very fast going just got to him it also was a very tough race there um and then prior to that last year's king stand over the five here on on the 20th of june he finished fourth by three and three quarter lengths again not the best beginnings that day he was a little behind the a ball he moved a little bit late but he had a little bit too much ground to get into the race and then at haydock of uh, two weeks prior in the group two temple stakes he finished ninth by seven and a half lengths that day and he just kind of hit the wall that day i do like that he has one run going to this race this year last year had quite a few runs where he just seemed like he was a little bit of a tired horse he probably ran his best race um of the season last year in this one la uh, last year but um I, I like that he's a little bit lightly raced this year and i think that should suit him well he has won over this course but he, he, he's run terrifically on it he had a very nice place last time out in the king stand um and then in the king stand of 2022 he finished second that day behind nature strip who was next out winner again he didn't get out of the gate so clearly but he gained a lot of ground late he just missed but he ran his hard out prior to that in the temple stakes 2022 at, at, at haydock he had a very nice place also behind king's lane refreshing here he's been close to but no cigar recently lightly raced this year I think he could find a trip to win. I would use him at 10 to 1 on the ticket, or I am going to use him on the ticket at 10 to 1. I think the four horse Curdos for Clive Cox and Richard King's coat could find the winner's enclosure also. Most recently, he ran the horse in the Temple Stakes at Haydock over the five furlongs on very soft ground. He won by half a length that day, and from a tracking trip, you know, he, he basically won quite easily, quickened up nicely, and he, and he got the job done. Third time, start of the season. Third time to charm, a very good race that day. Prior to that, in the Palace House in Newmarket over the five, he finished fifth by three quarters length that day, and he just couldn't get there late. He had a little traffic trouble, which probably cost him also. You know, he improved off the previous race, but he still needed a, a better run. And then throughout the race at Bath, I'm very 
sludgy going and a five furlong handicap there. He finished eighth by five and a quarter lengths that day, and I just don't think he liked a very heavy going. He just wasn't comfortable that day. And then you just saw a very tough competition in the Prix de Alibi de Long Champ. He finished eighth by two and a quarter uh, lengths that day, and it was an all out finish. Highland Princess ran terrifically. This, or Highfield Princess ran terrifically. This horse just wasn't comfortable that day. But when the Beverly Bullet Sprint quite nicely on, a, on, a, on the front end at Beverly last summer, back here to Ascot, had a very nice um, place in the Palace of Holy. Holy Rood last year. I'm going to give this horse a shot on the ticket. I think he's um, really uh, improving a lot. But to recap my selection now for the third, the 345 from Ascot, it is the Group 1 King Stan, or formerly known as King Stan, now it's the King Charles III. Today he's going to take the seven horse Twilight Calls. Give kudos to the four horse Kurtos. Uh, seven four, four Cas Exacta. Use them both in the multi race here. Now the fourth race to 425 from Ascot. It's the Group 1 St. James Palace Stakes. It's a Group 1 event going for a purse of $873,000. Race for three year olds here. We have a field of eight horses going 1,600 meters or a mile over the round mile course, or the turn mile, shall I say, for us Americans. Uh, by my top selection, I'm going to go with the seven horse Rosalyn, um, or Rosalyn. I'm going to go, I can't speak uh, today, pardon me, it's been a long day. I'm going to go 726 in the Tricast Trifecta. 726 Tricast Trifecta, top selection, seven horse Rosalyn. Um, this trio called by Blue Point here. Richard Hatton trained, Sean Levy gets the mount. Um, just thinking about Blue Point, he was an incredible horse. Uh, was that 2019 now, five years ago, or or which was it 2018 where he won on he won the king's stand on Tuesday, came back to run Saturday in the Diamond Jubilee and put on a show, you know, off a of five days uh, break, and that was his final start. I, I want to say it was 2019, so I think it's five-year anniversary, but, um, you know, I think he was a very underrated horse of the um, of the mid-20-teens, I guess, and um, his offspring have really been doing wonders since they've hit the track. But back to this one, this horse ran terrifically in Ireland last time out the Curra. One mile in the group, one Irish 2,000 guineas. He won by head that day, and he stalked, he got leave, and he beat a good group of horses home. A very good strong run. Great ride by Sean Levy. He's a very underrated rider, I think. Refreshing back here. Very good poster. Could be fairly paced off some decent runs. I think he's sitting on a very good race. It seems like with him, it, they've taken their time with him, and, it's, and it looks like it, it took him a little bit of time to get going, but when he finally did, he really started to improve a lot. He ran his heart out of the 2,000 guineas at Newmarket over the mile, where he finished second by one quarter lengths by notable, noble, notable speech. Excuse me, can't speak. Noble speech really, you know, just closed up from nowhere to get the job done. This horse had a little bit closer to the pace. He just kind of hit the wall late, but, you know, he he got around the race course well. Might need the race there off the bench, though. And the group one, pre John Luc Lagarde at Longchamp over the seven. He won by length that day. He was all out on the front end. Liked the sludgy going. A very good race. Even the race in the Champagne at Doncaster over the seven. He finished third by three and three quarter lengths, where, again, he moved a little bit late. He showed potential. His three-year-old form has been incredible so far. He's drawn very well. It could be fairly paced. Should go up a lot with quick ground. He could win. I think a long shot play would be the two horse Alanabi for Owen Burroughs and Jim Crown. Alley. Most recently in the Guineas, he finished fifth by four and a quarter lengths that day, where I just thought he won a little bit more ground. I think I'll see a bit of a quicker pace here today in the small compact group of horses, and I think that's going to really suit him well today. He's definitely bred for this mile trip with the two darn hot here. Two back in the Dewhurst at Newmarket over the miles, uh, over the seven on the soft ground in the fall, and he plays behind City of Troy that day. He ran horribly next start on the Guineas, came back to run a terrific race in the Derby, but this horse, he sat back early, he slowly moved his way into it. Again, didn't weaken out of it, but he he showed potential that day, and then the Tattersalls at Newmarket over the seven in September on fast, fast ground. He won by nose that day, and he basically, you know, was under drive excelling a very good race he ran here in the pandettery over the summer last year we had a decent fourth where again rosalian beat him that day and almus mack who uh, placed that that was next down winner this horse was traveling decently down the racetrack i thought he had a little bit trouble that day uh going uh, down the racetrack a little traffic but um he got down there well he's run races fast enough that could win here today refreshing here i'll give him a shot on the ticket he you know it wouldn't surprise me at 15 to 1 even the six horse notable speech a little bit um you know, who would have thought you're a horse uh, running on the all weather Kempton over the winter would have won your, been your uh, Guineas winner? Um, you know, I, I didn't think that, but he ran terrifically at 16 to 1 in the Guineas, winning by one and a quarter lengths, closing up from nowhere. Very good race. Doesn't have a lot of forwardly pace. You know, he closed up from nowhere in the Kempton uh, can do, novice race before that, and then completely missed a break in his debut at, uh, at Kempton in January. But after that, he's really improved a lot. Refreshing here. 
you know, it's three to two. I know he's a short price, but he could definitely win. I would use him to pick four, but I do think the other two are more likely are winners and also better value here. But it's going to be an exciting king stand here. But to recap my selection now for the fourth, the 325 from, or excuse me, the 425 from Ascot. It's the group one St. James Palace. going to take the seven horse Rosalian. Give kudos to the two horse Alan Nabi and the six horse Noble Speech. Um, uh, notable Speech, excuse me. Seven, two, six, try cash, try fact. Use all three of them in the quad pod or place pod or pick four or six, whatever we decide to play, whatever country you're in. So with that being said, good luck to all. Please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Get 5 for more selections for race courses around the world. And join me tomorrow for some more Royal Ascot previews. Good luck, everyone.